Welcome back. Thank you to Celligent for sponsoring the email and mobile track. And thank you to Salesforce for sponsoring the Marketing Sherpa Awards 2017. So I mentioned yesterday we had 202 entries into the awards and you saw the best in show and the reader's choice. But we also had some that were very, very good that were the Reader's Choice finalists, and one of those is Jonathan Levy. So I want to congratulate you, Jonathan Levy and SkyJet, on being a Reader's Choice finalist. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I appreciate this, and uh, I'm honored to accept it on behalf of my team at SkyJet and FlexJet, and, and I really appreciate this opportunity to be here today. So Congratulations, thank you. Jonathan. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so let's, let's talk about your, uh, your on-demand private jet charter company and your mobile app and that huge increase in leads. And, and I think the best way to think about this story, we were talking about this beforehand, you know, it's what type of things can you purchase with your fingerprint, right? You could purchase mm -hmm. lunch, you could purchase concert tickets, but you can charter a private jet for $20,000. And that blows my mind that you can do that with a fingerprint now because of you, Jonathan. We're gonna get into that story. But let's first start by talking about you. What's your background? What do you do? with? FlexJet. I'm the senior digital marketing manager with FlexJet, and I oversee all digital marketing, the website, mobile apps, uh, analytics, uh, and digital advertising. And as part of that responsibility, I oversee SkyJet as well. Okay. And so SkyJet, that's the brand we're going to talk about with the app. And how does SkyJet serve its customers? So SkyJet is an on-demand private jet starter service provider. Uh, the typical client is, you know, one, one example could be a professional golfer. You know, they have to get to tournaments every week. They have several golf bags that they have to take with them. So they could pull up the app, request a private jet within 48 hours, they're on it, and they're, they're on their way to their next tournament. And it allows them to be more efficient with their traveling. And basically, we get people to their destination faster. Okay. So a lot of companies, they hear things like, oh, if someone downloads an app, they have a higher you know, customer lifetime value, they're a more engaged customer, so let's all run out and do an app. What I really like about your story, Jonathan, is you didn't just run out and do an app to do an app. You really were looking at, is there a business case for this? So why don't you start by talking about the mobile performance you saw? Yeah, we actually started doing uh, mobile advertising on Google AdWords in the fourth quarter of 2014, and then we continued that into the first quarter of 2015 and saw a 50% increase in uh, mobile traffic uh, from our ads. And we also saw a 177% increase in mobile quote requests quarter over quarter. So that was really the, the, you know, the straw that, that broke the camel's back, the, really to, to get the internal buy-in to do a mobile app. There was a lot of disruption in the marketplace already, very fragmented other apps from startups, from other established companies, and we wanted to be the next company to come out with, a, with an app. So we see that in social media sometimes where a brand looks and they say, hey, where should we go on social next? And you see where the customers already are. They're already on Pinterest. It makes sense to go there. You're saying, hey, we know they're on mobile. It makes sense to make that investment. So why don't you tell us a little more about this mobile AdWords campaign you were doing? Yeah, so we actually uh, used mobile AdWords to target people searching for top airports. Uh, that people traditionally fly privately to, and they were mobile-only ads. So here's an example of one on the screen. It had the, the phone number, uh, very quick and easy to understand call to action, and it really just drove great quality leads on our website as well as phone calls. And uh, it was a successful campaign, and it influenced our overall approach to digital marketing. And what were the results? Uh, we had a 93% increase in website bookings, but as I mentioned earlier, there was a 177% increase in mobile quote requests quarter over quarter. That's awesome. All right, so once you decide you want an app, I mean, building the app is no small task. So why don't you take us through how you chose the right partner to build that app? Yeah, that's a good question. So we actually uh, came up with a list of about 10 vendors that we wanted to approach, and we sent out RFPs to them and uh, asked for client references, uh, looked at their portfolio of work, uh, their, the, the verticals that they've worked on, what types of apps are they well known, have they won awards, and we ultimately came up with a shorter list. We then asked for client references and uh, looked at their design and UX capabilities, and ultimately we decided to work with our agency of choice uh, because design is so important to us and that they understood how design translated into and met our business goals and that the user experience had to meet our business objectives or align with our business objectives. 
So we, what we ended up doing um, after getting the client references and, and having many discussions over several months uh, with these vendors uh, and finally selecting on the one that we worked with, we had a concept workshop with them, a two-day workshop at their office in San Francisco where it was basically a discovery session where we spent 16 hours with their team and it was me and some other key stakeholders that went there and we further defined the scope even though we had a pretty good idea of what we wanted the app to do but it, uh, it really allowed us to determine that we needed to have some key differentiators in the app if we wanted the app to be successful such as having Apple Pay and uh, instant pricing. So what did, was there anything specific you did to prep for this concept workshop? Like what exactly is that concept workshop? Um, we didn't do much to prepare for it other than having just the list of features that we wanted to, to, to include. So we went out there with, with an open mind and it was really a, a, a cooperative learning environment with them. Now, one thing we've seen in our marketing Sherpa data is the most important thing that people want in an app is utility, right? They want it to have some function. Mm -hmm. And nowadays, the mobile web can do so much. Why have the app? So how did you decide on which features were the right features for your app and why they were so important? So uh, the app had to have uh, a quoting capability and a booking capability. Uh, the original app uh, had ungated price estimates. The current app has ungated uh, instant pricing, essentially. Um, and you can basically quote, book, and pay for your flight within 60 seconds, all by having Apple Pay. And so we were the first app in the aviation industry to have Apple Pay in it. Uh, others have since added Apple Pay since then, but we're still the only uh, app in the, in the industry, in the, tri in the private aviation industry, that has Apple Pay for instant booking, all without any memberships and uh, repositioning fees. So, so why ungated price estimates? I mean, if they've made the commitment to download the app, you don't want to get it? So the ungated price estimates was uh, meant to be a competitive differentiator. So, uh, so many other apps and websites ask for email addresses and phone numbers before you can actually like, get a quote. But since our quotes were provided instantly, we didn't need that information uh, from the user and we also wanted to uh, educate the users so we knew that there would be some users that would download the app uh, who would not be qualified, but we still serve the need as a utility to, to educate the market uh, or the potential market uh, about the cost of flying privately. All right, so obviously the app is really just the front end, right? Mm -hmm. So what does it take to make it work on the back end? Uh, <laughs> a lot, a lot of data. Um, you know, even the best user experience can be shackled if uh, you don't have the right data in the proper format to meet the, the needs of the app's uh, front-end capabilities. So we have a CRM system that was built in early 2000, uh, and we leveraged that instead of going to a third-party vendor, and there are several of them that we could have gone to to pay for their services to, to sort of handle the instant quoting and the booking, uh, but we decided to um, leverage existing technology and, and do some upgrades to it in order to, to, to run the app. Um, also, uh, security is, a, is a, a major thing to consider for app, for app development and that the web services need to be uh, in at least TLS 1.1. Especially if you have Apple Pay and you're actually going through transactions on the app, Definitely. Right? Yeah. Um, all right, so it's one thing to have an app. It's one thing to launch an app. It's quite another thing to get people to actually use the app. So let's take a look at what's some of your App Store optimization tips. So with App Store optimization, obviously, you want to choose the right app name. You have 50 characters that you can use for the title. Uh, I always recommend to, to people when I'm talking about App Store optimization, you want to use your app's name uh, in the front part of it and then any like three or four keywords after the app name that describes so ours is SkyJet, private jet charter flights. Um, maximizing your keywords, you have 100 keywords that you can use, no spaces allowed, and you comma separate them. So having additional keywords that you don't use in your title. One growth hack that we used was uh, leveraging uh, the Spanish language uh, in the App Store for American Spanish, uh, because it's the second most popular language in, in, the, in the US. 
and we put some uh, Spanish versions of, of our top keywords in there, so it actually allowed us to have 200 uh, characters of keywords in, for one app store listing. So that was like a little bit of a growth hack. We certainly wrote a, co a compelling description that really described like what the feature set uh, of the app is, and then we uh, included a video uh, as well as screenshots, and the video was very helpful uh, to people who really, it, it's the value proposition. It's everything that, you know, that's been discussed throughout the conference the last couple of days, is you gotta you know, lead with the value proposition. And many, uh, there's, there's uh, statistics that are out there that people that watch the video end up downloading the app in the App Store. Of course, Apple doesn't tell you <laughs> how many video plays you get and how many downloads as a result, but uh, they've, do, they've done user tests. Let's take a look at the video in just a moment, but that's a great point. If someone's going to download an app, you know, they don't know what value is hidden on the other side of that action, mm -hmm. so kind of revealing that value. So this is kind of like a product demo for the app, right? Yeah, it's a product demo for the app, and it's really accurate because you can book a jet so seamlessly, and we show the whole process from soup to nuts in 30 seconds. All right, so let's watch that video. Skyjet makes booking a private jet easier than ever. Enter your itinerary, compare prices, and book a flight instantly. Skyjet offers exclusive charter access to a custom fleet of aircraft for your next trip. Select your jet, confirm your booking, and pay right from the app in seconds. That's it. You're on your way with peace of mind thanks to Skyjet's rigorous safety standards. Download Skyjet today and simplify your private jet travel. Very nice. Now, one thing Scott Dickers was talking about this morning is about like, creating that really unique kind of surprisingly pleasant customer experience so people will get talking about it. And by creating the first mobile app with Apple Pay, you got people talking, including the press. Why don't you tell us The about first that? private jet app with Apple Pay. The first Not private the jet first app. Mobile app. <laughs> Not right. the first mobile app with Apple Pay. Thanks for correcting I me. got that idea from all the other apps, and um, you know, there was a lot of red tape to go through with, with Apple to, to get them to uh, you know, accept Apple Pay for such high transaction sizes. I mean, the typical transaction is between fifteen and $20,000. So uh, there was that. But once we got that set in place in the app, then it was off to the races with, with generating the press. And we had two PR agencies working uh, the tech pubs and the business pubs and the lifestyle pubs and the, the, the trades for, for aviation industry. So we were very, very active with our press uh, coverage in, in late 2015 and even 2016 when we did the second version of the app. Uh, so we had an extremely targeted outreach list. Uh, we created a press kit with strong visuals, having the video in there, having example photos, uh, uh, screenshots of, of the app. And then uh, we obviously had the very compelling story, uh, compelling story and angles, the Apple Pay, the user experience, the ungated price estimates, really highlighting the key uh, competitive differentiators for our business as it relates to um, the industry. Now, when we talk about other ways of press, I'm sure it's a great way to get the word out, get people to download the app. I love this idea. <laughs> you did some print advertising. Because when we think about it, print is really the original mobile marketing, right? You take a magazine with you to the beach, the pool, whatever. You got your phone right there. Great chance to uh, download it. What was the strategy behind the print ads? So the strategy with the print advertisements, we, we only did a couple. We, we were in Rob Report and Jet Set Magazine. Uh, the Rob Report was the private aviation guide, uh, which comes out every September. And the Jet Set Magazine was uh, an extended run uh, edition that came out shortly after Donald Trump announced that he was running for president. So he was on the cover, and they had uh, a ton more uh, print, uh, a, a larger uh, distribution than they typically have. So uh, we had a little bit of fun with the headline of the ad because uh, the app really does everything that you need to need it to do to book a flight. So. Um, print ads were great for us, uh, but it was hard to attribute the installs um, because it is a print format. Uh, we had a call tracking number, um, didn't get many calls, but uh, we did see a lift in app downloads uh, and installs and usage uh, after running those, uh, those ads. And of course, you used email and social as well to do a little cross-talk. Oh, yeah, email was great. We, bought, we, we partnered with uh, 
some, some of the same publications to leverage their uh, email lists. We did dedicated emails, so it was also an extremely targeted audience for receiving the, the messaging that we had to convey. And um, the share of voice with those emails, the dedicated emails, was 100%. Uh, we did some social media uh, with, with those same publications. Obviously, a lot of social media on our, you know, on our channels, communicating it out there, running social media ads on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, so it really, uh, and those, the digital marketing or the digital advertising promoting the app was very trackable and very successful. Uh, and we uh, were able to uh, track the ROI and even the number of uh, bookings from, from those ads. Okay, so there's, there's so much work you have to do with an app. You gotta build the app. Mm -hmm. You gotta get people to download it. And then you gotta get people to engage. So if you look at the data, most data when people download apps, the drop off after a few days, it just falls off a cliff mm -hmm. of actually using the app. So how did you get them to engage a little more with your app? So with engagement, we, we needed to uh, optimize our push, op, our push notifications and the opt-in, the whole requesting uh, the permission or people to subscribe to push notifications. So in uh, version 1.0, we put up the, the opt-in screen uh, right when someone opened the app for the first time. And that was the one and done opportunity. We, it was kind of a, a fail. Uh, in the second version of the app, or version 1.0.1, we actually uh, showed the, the opt-in after someone provided their email. So we kind of missed out on uh, doing sending push notifications to anyone who never requested a quote or uh, created an account because you actually, once you got pricing, you then had to create an account to request a firm quote. Now with the app, uh, which we will so show on the next screen, we actually have uh, soft asks. And the purpose of a soft ask is to create, uh, convey the value of why they should sign up for push notifications and to communicate that to them so that at a very key, uh, at a key experience point when they're interested in actually receiving notifications. So for example, they've done several searches in the app for different prices, uh, for different itineraries. We give them, uh, and, but they haven't booked anything. We'll actually give them the push, uh, the soft ask that says, you know, you haven't uh, booked anything yet sign up for special offers and they can hit okay and then they're signed up for push notifications so that we can uh, try to re-engage with them. It's like almost like cart abandonment. They've, they've added items to their cart but they haven't checked out. Uh, so we, we opened up that new communication channel to them by having push notifications and, and push notifications are a great communication channel. Pro I would say they're even stronger than email because it's right at the, the front, uh, right at the you know, home screen of your device. It pops up. You don't have to deal with any you know, uh, 700 emails you know, in your inbox. Uh, and then the other times, or the other key experience, key experience points are more transactional in nature. So they've requested a quote. Uh, we'll ask them to sign up so that they can receive notifications on when their quote's ready to review, if they, re if they ask for a custom quote. And then uh, the other is after they've paid for a trip, after they've booked a trip, uh, that's more uh, of their post-transaction push notifications that we send. So flight alerts, your jet is ready to board, your tail number is X, um, and, and, and having those different types of push notifications allows us to re-engage users and, and keep them uh, engaged with the app and the brand. Yeah, I love how you've thought through the push notifications, because that might be something relatively new with an mm -hmm. app. I mean, that's some good basic marketing principles. Give before you get, right? Don't ask right. them for something right when they download that app. And also explain the value of what you're giving, right, mm -hmm. with the soft asks. Right, right. The soft ask is, you know, a, a major re-engagement hack that everyone should do if, with, with their mobile marketing. Now, this app had a really transformative uh, impact on your overall company and the business model. Why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so the first app was really a quoting tool. Uh, but it allowed people to book and pay, you know, with Apple Pay. Um, but we quickly realized that we had the back-end system in place that enabled us to become a hybrid broker. So we went from being just a broker and a quote, uh, having a quoting app to becoming uh, the Uber of private jets, essentially. Uh, we negotiated some partnerships with uh, some key par uh, operators that, uh, enabled us to have uh, 
exclusive access to their fleet so that we could offer that up uh, instantly uh, to users in the app. So that's what version two of the app was. And it, we reduced the steps by 40% between version one and 42 uh, for booking. And, and I mean, just like the video shows, you can book, you can quote, book, and pay for a private jet within a minute. Great. So, and so it was really impactful to our business. And uh, mobile and digital actually make up 33% of our sales in all of 2016. What, what other impacts did it have on your business? Um, obviously all the downloads. We actually are second in market share in the United States uh, for private jet app downloads with 35,000 uh, since its release in August 2015. Uh, the first 12 weeks in the App Store, we actually had a 38% uh, average week over week user growth rate uh, with all the PR that we were doing, the digital advertising, we actually could not really do a burst campaign like many uh, large scale apps uh, do because we had to be very targeted with our approach and obviously having a limited budget uh, and a limited niche audience, we had to be uh, just very strategic with that approach. Not um, everyone can afford a private jet. Not charter, everyone right? can afford yeah. a private jet. We, and we knew that unqualified people would download the app, but we would, uh, qualify them essentially, or disqualify them by them using the app and experiencing uh, the, the, the instant price estimates. Um, we've also, uh, this, this number actually has gone up a little bit, but uh, we average about 1,500 uh, searches per week uh, in our app, uh, itineraries processed. So a lot of people are running trip quotes uh, weekly and um, 24% of our bookings came through the app in 2016. Uh, and like I mentioned, 33% of all uh, sales came from digital. So aside from the numbers, what kind of type of feedback have you had from the industry and from customers? And uh, great feedback from customers. Um, we've won some awards, uh, which I'm very grateful to, to, to share. Uh, a mo best mobile user experience from i for travel We actually... Um, beat American Airlines and Alaska Airlines. Uh, a couple months ago, we won a Silver Addy in Cleveland for the mobile application, uh, for best mobile application. Um, we've, it's, it's, been, it's been a fun ride. Very nice. It's been a fun ride. Right, a little turbulence, a little bumpy ride, or just a very smooth one? <laughs> um, <laughs> not so much turbulence, just a lot, a lot of work, a lot of work, and it's paid off. For sure. So, uh, just a very exciting uh, project and a passion project for me. My first app personally, and now I'm working on some other apps for the business. All right, well, if you have any questions for Jonathan, raise your hands and we'll have a mic come around to you. But as uh, so it's your first app, what advice would you give to other marketers if they're going to embark on an app? Yeah, so you just need to understand how and where your customers are interacting with your brand. That's the whole looking at the analytics, seeing what Google AdWords did for us, and making sure you, where you are in your space. Uh, if you have competitors that have apps and they're seeing success with it, then maybe it's a sign that you should um, do an app. But you know, obviously, you have to see if it makes sense for your business. Do your research. Um, Obviously, entering a new space, you want to research all the different app developers that are out there if you don't have uh, the resources internally to do it. Uh, and make sure you're creating the best experience possible for your customers, because at the end of the day, you want to have a really good user experience, because that'll allow your app to actually become successful and people to really resonate uh, with, with your brand and, and what your uh, mobile, uh, I mean, I consider apps an extension of your brand and an extension of our service. And uh, launching the app, I mean, Skyjet has been around since 1997, and launching an app, you know, 18 years after it's founded, we, we weren't a startup. I mean, yeah. we, we had a, an existing customer base. It was just an evolution of our brand, and it allowed us to uh, better compete in a, in a very, uh, with all the digital transformation going on in the private aviation industry. Um, and then mobile app marketing goes beyond app installs. Uh, you wanna make sure that you have uh, effective user engagement um, plans in place, as well as a growth strategy to not only grow your user acquisition, um, but also add growth in terms of uh, financial in the app. So getting those people to convert yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, that's why you have your app, right? And to refer other users. 
Yeah. So having a referral program in place as well always works. And I assume that helps with customer reviews as well, right? Having that powerful customer Yeah, the experience. customer reviews, app store reviews are important. They help with the rankings in the app store as well. Okay, great. Any questions for Jonathan? All right, well, Jonathan will be up here after the session. Feel free to come up to him and ask him. And thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you. Thank you.